I want to give you just a little bit more insight into a little bit of wrist cock down through strike and beyond to help straighten out those golf shots. A warm welcome back to the channel. I wanted to follow on from my video this week on wrist cock and how it works in the downswing and through strike. I talked about setup and I've had a few people reference how this left hand has started to create a few left shots. Now, if you're someone that's moved from a left hand where the left forearm and the left wrist look in line, you'll have been a guy that needs to feel, or girl that needs to feel like you've got to rotate the forearms, rotate the club face through strike to create a straight shot. And if you haven't had much success in rotating the forearms, the next thing you would have tried to do is bow your left wrist through strike in an effort to create a draw as well. Now, both of those things are absolute garbage. That's first things first. The grip's garbage and the bow of the left wrist is garbage and the rolling of the toe over the heel is garbage too. So if you've been trying any of that stuff, and I speak tongue in cheek, but it really is garbage. What you need to do, as I say, is try and apply the left hand orientation that I talked about in my video earlier on this week. I'm not gonna go over it again, but go, do go check that out. Now, a few of, few of you have commented that now you've got the grip, and of course, coming from those old philosophies, bowing the left wrist, getting the toe over, will all contribute to you now hitting the golf ball a considerably long way left. Because when you have a left hand with that kind of orientation, as you start to strike, when you get down into the delivery area, that face is now more closed over than you're used to. So with this kind of shape of wrist, you would normally have had your face angle like so, looking more up to the sky. So you would needed to have rotated your forearms to get it back straight. But of course now, if you now have that good grip and you get yourself into a position in delivery and the face is now looking much better, if the shape of the wrist is not correct as with the club unloads, you're gonna really battle not to hit it as straight as that. So what I wanted to do is give you this little exercise that's really gonna help you understand how we can fend off the hook because that's obviously, it's a powerful shot, the hook. But in old money, they used to say, you can never talk to a hook, you can talk to a slice. Well, I don't think you can talk to all of them really because they're off in the, in the trees. <laughs> so what we need to do is take your left hand, pull it down underneath your chest and once you've got yourself in a nice posture, stretch the band, grab it with your thumb and forefinger. And now what you've got is a cousin of the grip. So if I was to now rotate my left hand and now grip it, the cup that you can see in this orientation, as I rotate the forearm, grip the golf club, now you can see my grip is line share in the same position that you could see in that video that I did earlier on in the week. Now from here, what we're looking for is a handle track that starts to follow the track of the left shoulder. The track of the left shoulder coming around will draw the left arm in. Drawing the left arm in is something that a lot of golfers shy away from because as soon as they think the left arm comes in, their first immediate response is, oh, but I'm going to swing the club head in. Well, that's not the case because as you can see from the video here, as I move the handle in, the club head has stayed very much out in front of me. So the pressure on that handle that's exerting itself down from my shoulder and with the handle being underneath my shoulders and my spine being at 90 to the club shaft, I really have a good opportunity to allow that left shoulder and that right hip to talk to itself. And as I push the force down off of my posture, I now start to get an opportunity where I can start to elevate the club head up. The club head is still swinging in, which you can see on the camera from above. Club head's still swinging in, and at that point, the golf club's head weight now wants to swing a little bit more back behind. So that band drill 
really gives me the opportunity to feel the head weight. So I'm going to pop my right hand underneath my left elbow, push the band down, and now I'm going to get the sense that that club head weight, and I always talk about it in my videos, don't I, about the head weight being a constant moving, uh, swinging uh, implement. The club can never be positioned. So what we're trying to do is to inspire the motion that club head has. Now, when that club head starts to fall back this way, and we see it a lot in golf swing trace uh, technology, don't we? We get this head trace, the head trace moving back. Now, if the head trace is moving back, the handle will be moving forwards. And I would love to see more handle traces and not as many head traces because handle traces would be the real insight for golfers. Because as the head falls back, remember, look how much that head has traveled and look how much that handle's traveled, which is why I've been met with some resistance, some outspoken comments, which I'm all for, because I love it, that when I move this golf club back and I move the handle forwards, which I've done in my What Happens Next video from the video above, as the head falls backwards, that handle pulling forwards here is not seen to the magnitude that we see the head moving. Of course it wouldn't because the lever point or the pivot point is the handle and the thing that's making the biggest amount of noise, the biggest amount of movement, is the club head. So the handle in itself, in essence, doesn't move that much, but I can assure you there's some energy moving forwards. So as this left hand pushes down on that theraband and I start to get some cupping in the left wrist here and that club head starts to work over me, when that club starts to work back down, all of a sudden, I strike the golf ball from the inside at six degrees, I've got a face close to my path at 1.3 and an angle of attack down at 1.4. So the momentum of that club head that I've created from the theraband stretch that creates the cup in the left wrist that makes the club head fall over, now gives me the opportunity that when I start to pull and swing the head down at the bottom here, that pressure down in the handle, that swinging element of the club head, gives me a chance to line it back up. So my left wrist, all of a sudden, down through strike, the left wrist down through strike, suddenly has this cup, rather than bow. Oh, nasty. Bow up. And if you've, if you've got yourself a TheraBand, push the TheraBand down and then try and hold the force in the TheraBand with a bowed left wrist. Oh, Jesus. That's going to be painful. And that's what you've been instructed to do a few times, I am sure. So this left wrist through strike now becomes something that will offset the face angle because of the good grip that I've given you. Pad of the hand, all of a sudden we've got the momentum of the head, the pressure down through the handle, through strike, now look at where the loft is pointing, which is allowing me to feel like pushing down, cupping the wrist, will only but make my golf ball go less, less to the left as I push the handle down more and more. 1.8, if I push it down even more with even more cut through strike, all of a sudden, I can get myself just a cheeky little fade. So all of a sudden, I'm modulating the pressure down through the hand and the wrist cock, the shape of the wrist cock that I've created down at strike in unison with how I've stood and held the golf club. There's the wrist cup. There's the loft of the golf club here. But if we don't start with that force and pressure on the button pad of the left hand, when I come to make these feels through strike, I'm really gonna be battling. So use that TheraBand drill to instigate the motion away, fix that swinging of the head inside, fix the slight overdraw that you might have from changing to that 
left hand grip. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that you're starting to get a bit of a clearer picture on where we're heading. If you want to grab a lesson with me, you can seek my link in my diary in the description below or check me out on Skillist. I offer a variety of options that give you a chance to do a little bit of work with myself. I think you'll find, as usual, that's good coaching. See you next time.